In this video, I'll be showing you how you can integrate Scheduler with Arduino and make your own projects to schedule different events to happen at specific time. For this project, we are using the latest version of Arduino Nano board, the Arduino Nano ESP32. With its inbuilt wireless chipset, it makes it easier to connect your project to the internet, allowing you to control and monitor them remotely using smartphone or computer. This means that you can turn the lights on and off, check the temperature, or receive notification from anywhere in the second. Also, the Arduino Nano's compact size makes it suitable for smaller projects where space is limited. Also, we'll be making use of Arduino IoT Cloud in order to set up the project. If you haven't tried Arduino IoT Clouds yet, I strongly recommend you to give it a shot. Arduino IoT Cloud lets you easily connect your gadgets to the internet so you can control them from anywhere with an internet connection. Recently, a new feature was developed for Arduino IoT Cloud that will take your DIY skills to a whole new level. The scheduler feature of the Arduino IoT Cloud is like having a helpful assistant for your DIY electronic project. It lets you plan when your device should do specific tasks automatically. For example, you can set it up to turn on lights at certain time or measure the temperature regularly and send you the updates. Now, we are going to be creating a small circuit in which we can connect all the simple electronic devices which can be used with the scheduler. So, let's start with the circuit. I used Altium Designer to draw the circuit and design the PCB. Altium is a PCB designer that can be used to create simple PCBs for hobby projects or complex and multi-layer PCBs for industrial use. It's easy to create our own PCBs using Altium. If you are a DIY electronics enthusiast, you are really going to love it. Altium subscription includes something called Altium 365. This lets you design, share, and manufacture your project everything in one place. Secure centralized cloud storage lets you share your design and ideas with teammates or clients. Altium 365 lets you make fast and accurate decisions by providing real-time component data, including the lifecycle status, pricing, and availability data from Octopath for millions of components. You can download and install the free trial version from the description down below. And if you are a student, you get a 6 month full license absolutely free. So don't miss out. So here we are in Altium PCB Designer. Here I will be using a pump that works on 12 volt. So I will be connecting a 12 volt DC adapter. The input power is connected to a 7805 voltage regulator. The 7805 is a 5 volt regulator which will convert an input voltage of 7 to 32 volt to a steady 5 volt DC supply. There are indicator LEDs across various points for easy troubleshooting. Here, there are two switches. One is a relay that is turned on by a transistor BC547 whose base is connected to digital pin 3. And then there is a MOSFET that is connected to digital pin 5 of the Arduino. Here, you should also see a buzzer that is turned on and off by this transistor right here. This transistor is connected to digital pin 6 of Arduino. You can either connect the pump to the MOSFET or the relay which can be turned on and off programmatically. I decided to connect the pump to the MOSFET so that I can connect some other devices like a bulb or something to the relay. You can use other switches to connect to any additional device like a lamp or motor to open the door or light the lamp with the scheduler. Whatever you do, first thing is to try it out on a breadboard. Once you are getting the full output, you can use it as such or make your own PCBs. I decided to go with PCBs. I have designed a PCB layout where I can easily mount the Arduino Nano ESP32, relays, MOSFET and other components, set this up without using any messy wires or cables hanging around. And it's cool to make our own PCBs for our projects, right? The board is lightweight and can be powered using a 9V battery or a 9-12V to 12 volt power adapter. Now, let me give you a quick tip for you that might save a lot of your money. Before adding the components to your circuit and designing the final project, it's always a good idea to have a good knowledge of the components such as specifications, availability as well as the price. Octopart is an amazing electronic component search engine. You can use Octopart to get all the details such as distributor, pricing and availability of components. You can also use Octopart to find components that meet your requirement. You can even purchase the component by clicking the link here itself. It's a free solution for most of your problems and you will get everything in one place. Now, I ordered my PCBs from PCBWay. PCBWay is a PCB manufacturer specializing in PCB prototyping, low volume production and neat and tidy PCB assembly. If you are interested in making your own PCBs for your project, check out the link below. 
you get a $5 discount when you sign up using the link below and get an additional $5 discount at the checkout by providing the coupon code PCBWAYLAND. To order your PCBs from PCBWAY, go to PCBWAY website and fill in the basic board details in the instant order form. From there, you will be directed to a form where you can provide more elaborate board details. Update your board information in the PCB specification screen. On the next screen, you should be able to upload your Gerber file and submit it for a review. Once the review is completed, all that is left to do is add to cart, make the payment and wait for your PCBs to arrive. Once you get all the components and the PCBs, it's time for you to solder them together. Solder all the components onto the board and make sure to check the polarity of the components before soldering. After soldering, the PCB looks like this. Now, we can go to Arduino IoT Cloud and log in with our credentials. This is the project that we are currently working on. Now, if you go inside this, we'll be able to see everything that is linked to this project. Here, you can see all the variables that are linked to this project and currently we only have one. That is this cloud scheduler variable named scheduler. Also, we can see that this project is linked to the board Arduino Nano ESP32. If you want to know more about Arduino IoT Cloud, make sure you check my previous video where I explain everything you need to know to get started. And also, I have configured my network right here. Now, I want to show you one more thing before we start coding. Let's go to the dashboard and open this one. This is a scheduler widget. This is where we configure when the scheduler should be activated and for how long it should be activated. For the demo purpose, here I have configured to run 4 seconds of every minute. And this widget is linked to the scheduler variable I showed you earlier. Now, let's go to the sketch. And if you take a look at the code here, we can see that the variable has already been declared. So you don't have to declare it once again. Here, in the setup function, we are initializing the serial communication and we are setting the pin mode of these pins as output pins. These pins are connected to the MOSFET, the BJT and the LED and like I mentioned earlier, I am connecting the pump to the MOSFET. So we'll be using this pin to control the MOSFET. Once that is done, the Arduino board will be connected to the Wi-Fi network that we configured earlier and here in this loop function, we can see that this function will be checking for any changes in the variable scheduler that we created. And inside this if condition, we tell it what to do. So in this case, when the scheduler is on or activated, we should be turning on these pins. And when the scheduler is not activated or when it is turned off, we should turn off these pins. Now, all you have to do is compile and upload this code to your Arduino Nano board. Once everything is done, connect everything together and connect the input valve of the pump to a water source and the other end to the plant port. Now, just to show you how the scheduler works, I will put this phone right here, which will be showing the current time, including the seconds. Now, when the next minute start, this pump will turn on for 4 seconds and then turn off. This is just a demo. There are a lot of things you can do with it. It all depends on your creativity. So if you have any doubts, make sure you ask it in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos.